The martyrdom of Polycarp is the story of a persecution of Christians in Smyrna in Asia Minor, some of whom had voluntarily put themselves forward for death in the arena. The story of the martyrdom reaches its height and conclusion in the hunting down and execution of the distinguished 86-year-old Bishop Polycarp. The account is written in the form of a letter from the Church of the Smyrnaeans to the Church of Philomelium, commending Polycarp's restrained witness according to the Gospel, as against those who willfully led others into danger by seeking out martyrdom. The account of the martyrdom states that there had been a fanatical man, likely a member of the Montanist sect, who had led a group of others to go with him to volunteer to be put to death for illegally being Christians. The account claims that when this man saw the wild beasts, he became so afraid that he was persuaded to deny Christ and offer the sacrifice to Caesar. The writer then goes on to say, For this reason, therefore, brethren, we do not praise those who come forward of their own accord, since the gospel does not teach us to do so. The account also mentions a man named Germanicus who was made to fight wild beasts in the arena. The account says that when the proconsul, wishing to persuade him, bade him have pity on his youth, he forcibly dragged the wild beast toward himself, wishing to obtain more quickly a release from their wicked and lawless life. It was because of this act of heroics that the crowd became amazed and called for the capture of Polycarp, the leader of the Christians. The writer records Polycarp as having not been afraid of this warrant issued for his arrest, and that he wanted to stay in the city and carry on with his daily responsibilities. However, his friends convinced him to flee to a nearby farm for protection. In this, the writer seeks to show how Polycarp is neither desirous of martyrdom, nor is he afraid of it. He appears to be content with whatever happens to him. He's not a coward who will deny Christ at the threat of death, and he's not a fanatic who believes he can get God to give him a better reward by getting himself and others killed in the name of Christ. Also, in this account of his death, three days before his capture and execution, Polycarp has a dream in which the pillow on which he slept was blazing with fire. From this, he concluded that he was going to be burned as a martyr. The fact that this was revealed to him in a dream indicates that his death was not something that he had decided for himself. It was something that God was going to allow to happen to him. This shows the difference between the view of martyrdom held by the fanatics and the view of martyrdom held by Polycarp. Polycarp believed that God would be using him in his death, rather than believing, as the fanatics did, that their actions would would cause God to favor them over others. Another point made in the account is Polycarp's sense of hospitality. Polycarp shows the true nature of a Christian and a martyr when the soldiers come to the farm to capture him and he offers to serve them a meal. Instead of taunting them in or behaving like a coward, Polycarp shows them kindness. Polycarp's views on martyrdom include the idea that martyrdom is an honor. The apostles before him had been martyred for their faith, and they had received the reward from Christ. Martyrdom was not something to be feared. However, martyrdom was also not something to be desired. The time of one's death was up to God to decide. Most importantly, a Christian ought to glorify God in both life and death. Polycarp believed that we represented Christ in the actions of our daily lives, and that true martyrs represented Christ in the actions surrounding their death.